information pro- happening now. The San Antonio Children's Shelter put on notice by the state. There are concerns about safety inside that facility. We've got the latest coming up. The DPS investigating allegations a lobbyist used a date rape drug on a state capitol staffer. The fallout in Austin and reaction from a local lawmaker. And peaceful protesters demanding transparency after a law officer shoots and kills Andrew Brown in North Carolina. His family's reaction after they see the body cam footage next. Dreaming of a vacation to Paris or maybe Rome? There are indications that may be possible as early as this summer. We'll explain coming up. Well, we're tracking this next upper level disturbance that's headed our way. It looks like it'll bring parts of South Texas some much needed rainfall. I'm gonna time that out for you and much more coming right up. The News at Five starts right now. And first at five, the deadline is now. Late last week, the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services put a placement hold on the San Antonio Children's Shelter's emergency shelter known as the Cottage. Now that hold means the state is stepping in to find new placement for children that are currently there. In a letter sent to the Children's Shelter, the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services says the shelter rejected a total of nine children into its care in two separate instances which the department says not only violates contractual obligations, but threatens the safety of the children. The president and CEO of the Children's Shelter released a statement that reads in part, quote, due to the capacity crisis we are facing across the state, the emergency shelter has tried to provide care and accommodations for much older youth, which is difficult to do at the cottage. We are working with our network of providers to move all children to other placements by the close of business Monday, which is about 30 seconds from now. We be that was not in the not in the letter. I just ad lib that part. We believe this is the best course of action for all. End quote. Again, the deadline is five o'clock today. We'll continue to follow this still developing story. The state capitol tied to a criminal investigation that is launched regarding allegations a lobbyist drugged a female staffer off site. As Jesse DeGoyato explains, news of these claims are prompting one San Antonio lawmaker to call for changing the culture at the state capitol that she says led up to this. It didn't happen here, but the state's seat of power was left shaken by allegations involving a staffer, a lobbyist, and Rohypnol, best known as the date rape drug that easily dissolves in the drinks of the unsuspecting. I will say I was appalled and disgusted when I heard the news. Um, very disappointed. And I am disgusted that this sort of predatory behavior is still taking place in and around our capital. Speaker Dade Filon's impassioned speech on the House floor went on to call for change. We can and we must do better when it comes to changing the culture in this building. Welcomed words, yet they were met with deep skepticism. The culture just hasn't changed, and I'm very disheartened about what, what's, what's occurred. State Representative Minjada says harassment incidents have occurred every year she's been there. It's a constant thing. And, and we deal with it every session, and here we are again. The House Speaker is now calling for in-person sexual harassment training, signage throughout with hotlines and emails to report any incidents. Victims shouldn't have to decide between their career and coming forward. That has to change. Yet with longtime lawmakers and their staff shielded by what Minjadis calls a shroud of secrecy. It's never going to change, and, and uh, you know, the public needs to be aware of it. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. A San Antonio homeowner had a rather rude awakening this morning. A man breaking into his home. SAPD says the suspect had already gotten inside several homes in the same area. But when he got to this one on Adair Bluff near Southeast Military and South WW White Road on the southeast side, the homeowner who was sleeping woke up and fought back. At one point, police say the homeowner got a hold of the suspect's gun and fired several shots. The suspect took off running, was arrested shortly after. The homeowner was taken to the hospital for head injuries and is expected to be okay. The search continuing for people involved in a shooting last night. San Antonio police say a man was shot during an argument at an apartment complex on South General McMullen near Kennedy Park. This happened around 930. The victim told officers he was walking backwards, yelling at a group of men when shots were fired. The man was taken to the hospital, is expected to be okay. So far, no one has been arrested. A fire at a northeast side home under investigation. San Antonio firefighters responding to flames at a home in the 7000 block of elusive pass around 1:30 this morning. It's not far from 1604 and lookout. 
They say the fire caused about $300,000 in damage. The home is now considered a total loss. We're told everyone inside the home made it out safely. For now, they're having to make other living arrangements. The cause is unknown. A couple of employees at a convenience store getting off to a shaky start to their work week. A man is in police custody after he broke into the 7-Eleven at Fair Avenue and I-37 on the south side and started attacking employees with some screwdrivers. It all happened before the store was even open. Could have ended up being much worse had it not been for a man passing by on his bike who stopped to help. Man, they were so terrified. They were, they were crying and screaming for help. And I, I didn't know what else to do but to go in there and help them. Mario Garza says he doesn't know what prompted the attack, but he says it didn't seem like the suspect was after money or anything else. Other than a nick on his hand, Garza is okay. The suspect had a cut on his hand, was taken to the hospital to be checked out. The employees are all okay. A major announcement on the demand for change in police brutality, specifically in the death of Breonna Taylor. Today, Attorney General Merrick Garland announced the Justice Department is investigating the Louisville Police Department. The investigation will assess whether Louisville police engage in a pattern of unconstitutional practices like stops, searches and seizures. Brianna Taylor fatally shot by Louisville police last year while they were serving a no knock warrant in search of her boyfriend. She was 26 years old. Meantime, growing calls for answers in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, where Andrew Brown Jr. was shot and killed by a police officer last week. Today, his family viewed some of the body camera footage for the first time. And as ABC's Rena Roy explains, they're now demanding answers. We do not feel that we got transparency. The family of Andrew Brown Jr. has now watched his final moments unfold on body camera footage behind closed doors, but we're only able to view a redacted version with some officers' faces blurred. We only saw a snippet wow. of the video. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't the family see all of the video? They only show one body cam video even though we know there were several calls for transparency growing louder. He's full protesters video. demanding the full raw video be released to the public. If we don't have transparency, we can never get to accountability. And if we never get to accountability, we can never get to healing and trust. Brown was killed last Wednesday in Elizabeth City as deputy sheriffs attempted to execute warrants related to felony drug charges. So guys, he announced he's got one male, 42 years of age, gunshot to the back. A neighbor who says she witnessed the shooting says Brown did not pose a threat to the officers when they opened fire. He was nonviolent. I can, anybody that knew him would tell you that. He was driving away. If any of my deputies broke any laws or violated any policies that come out through this investigation, they will be held accountable. The Pasquotank County attorney releasing a statement saying in part officials are continuing efforts to get a court order that would allow the video to be released to the public. Officials have placed seven sheriff's deputies on paid administrative leave as they investigate what exactly happened. One of the attorneys representing Brown's family says they were told by investigators that no drugs or weapons were found at the scene. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. The U.S. Census Bureau has released its first set of data from the 2020 headcount. It shows the U.S. has grown to more than 333,449,000 people. According to the census, that is a 7.4% increase, the second slowest jump ever. However, that count will impact Congress in a big way. California has lost a congressional seat for the first time in 170 years. Meantime, Texas gained two. The census numbers will be used to redraw political maps to account for shifts in the population. More numbers are expected to be released later this year. A reminder now, if you haven't voted in the city election yet, the early voting period ends tomorrow. Polls are open till 8 p.m. Both tonight and tomorrow. More than 56,900 ballots have been cast so far. The mayor's seat, 10 council seats and props A and B are on the ballot. You can view a sample ballot right now on KSAT.com. Election Day is Saturday, May 1st, this Saturday. 
And taking a look at the daily COVID-19 numbers in Bear County, Metro Health reporting 233 new cases, no new deaths today. There are 262 COVID positive patients in the hospital, 80 in the ICU, 50 people on ventilators. More than 750,000 people have had at least one dose of the vaccine. 497,266 people are now fully vaccinated. As the daily pace of vaccinations in the U.S. appears to be flattening, public health experts are struggling to get more Americans vaccinated. Meanwhile, the U.S. is also helping India, where an explosion of COVID cases overwhelming the health care system there. ABC's Andrew Dimber has more. New developments on the COVID vaccine front. The White House announcing the U.S. is set to release 60 million AstraZeneca vaccine doses to other countries. AstraZeneca is not authorized for use in the United States. We do not need to use AstraZeneca in our fight against COVID over the next few months. In India, a dramatic surge in cases. The country ravaged by a wave of infections. Hospitals in Delhi forced to turn away patients. There isn't enough oxygen or hospital beds to treat the sick. President Biden speaking with India's prime minister about U.S. support to help the nation fight the pandemic there. The White House set to deploy vaccine materials and PPE to India as its health system reaches the brink of collapse. At India's request, uh, we are exploring options to provide oxygen and related supplies. Meanwhile, here at home, the Johnson & Johnson one-dose shot is back in business after an 11-day pause due to rare blood clots in some people who received it. The vaccine never conclusively linked to those clots, but now the dose comes with an updated fact sheet. This after the CDC found out of the almost 8 million doses of the J&J &J vaccine, only 15 women suffered from incredibly rare blood clots. Dr. Anthony Fauci telling Americans the benefits far outweigh the minimal risks. We've looked at it. Now let's get back and get people vaccinated. But getting Americans fully vaccinated isn't without challenges. A new ABC News Washington Post poll finds 73% of those not yet vaccinated say they will not take the J&J &J shot. And nearly a quarter of all Americans surveyed say they don't want to get a shot at all. And there's now growing concern that Americans aren't getting the second dose of one of those two dose vaccines. The CDC says some 5 million Americans may have already missed the recommended time frame for getting that second shot. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. And meanwhile, WellMed is resuming its use of the Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccine this week. Starting Wednesday, they'll begin administering the J&J &J vaccine at both of their vaccination sites. They currently have about 1,900 doses available. You can call the number on your screen to set up an appointment. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is the only one dose option that's currently available. Decent amount of cloud cover out there today, but we still started at 67 and made it up to 87 for the high temperature, which is four degrees above average. You look at the readings right now, 83 Eagle Pass, 87 Seguin, and you get to Panna Maria, 87 as well. Leon Springs at 78. It really depends on how much cloud cover you've had in your individual neighborhood in terms of temperatures. Bulverde 85 and Windcrest now at 84. This evening, mostly cloudy. And the clouds are actually going to get lower in the sky and we could have a little bit of drizzle by sunrise tomorrow morning, but it shouldn't be a big deal. Becoming humid, it's going to be really sticky later tonight and into tomorrow and get ready. We've got a new upper level disturbance headed our way. Looks promising for rain chances. More on that coming up. Thank you, Adam. The European Union considering when to reopen its doors to American travelers once again. What you need to know now, the deals you might come across, and just how soon you could be backpacking through Europe. Next. All right, if you're looking to plan a big vacation, you may be able to put Europe back on the list. The European Union reportedly working to welcome vaccinated U.S. travelers as soon as this summer. Most non-essential travel has been banned for more than a year now, but as 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz reports, vaccinations are the key to easier travel. Their trip to San Antonio complete, Al and Pam Silsley wouldn't mind seeing Italy or Paris. Yeah. Love to go. Yeah. Yeah. Would you consider going as early as this summer? Yep. Heck yeah. They may be able to. The European Union will welcome fully vaccinated American travelers this summer, according to the New York Times, who spoke to the president of the commission. I would expect there to be a huge surge in new bookings 
uh, uh, for Europe travel this summer as a result. Travel expert Scott Kai says that's what happened when Iceland and Greece opened their doors. So how will the countries know if you've even been vaccinated? Well, that's where the so-called vaccine passports or certificates come in. Countries and the airlines are discussing how to implement them. Keep your white CDC card in a safe place. Make sure you don't spill anything on it. Make sure you don't lose it because that's going to be your pass to be able to visit Europe and other places this summer without having to have any negative test or, or, or quarantine upon arrival. Besides paper, they're looking at apps to show your proof on your phone. But with big demand, will there be deals? Kai says yes, because airlines will add flights. Now he says you can book a summer round trip from San Antonio to Dublin, Ireland for $353 and a round trip flight to Spain, $526. The EU has not given a date for reopening, but because summer tourism is huge there, Kai's expects it will be soon. Marilyn Moritz, Case at 12 News. Look outside with live cam this afternoon. Beautiful weekend and Monday kind of feeling like a Monday. It's just gray <laughs> it's, out there. It's kind of odd. Like there yeah. was some sun, but most of it's been overcast. But we liked the weekend. Oh, we loved the weekend. Wonderful. Let's just focus on yes. that. The weekend was spectacular. It was good. You could get some yard work done or just get outside and play. I had high hopes and aspirations for yard work. Just didn't exactly uh, come to fruition. <laughs> you were playing. Well, you know, daughter and her friend, let's go to the neighborhood pool. OK, who might argue? Let's Perfect. go. I can get out of this. Let's go play and have some fun. So anyway, took advantage of that. A few showers are ahead of us the next couple of days. I like what I see in terms of rain chances, but our storm chances really peak come Wednesday night on into the very early morning hours on Thursday. And as for temperatures, we're not going to see a big spike or a big drop. We're mostly going to be in the 80s over the next seven days. So let's start with a look at our rain chances and talk about this and time it out for you. You look at the cloud cover. There is plenty of it. A lot of it coming in from the southwest. It was coming and going throughout the day today, but it kept us from getting too hot and too warm out there. And this is all mid and upper level Pacific moisture that's moving our way, which is good. It's going to help to saturate the entire column of air above us in the days ahead. Now, what we're focusing on now is this upper level disturbance that's currently over northern Nevada. That's going to drop southward and very slowly work its way over Texas. Already, it's causing a lot of precipitation there throughout the Rockies and even parts of the Pacific Northwest. We anticipate it to bring some decent precipitation here to South Texas as well and other parts of Texas. Additionally, not just our neck of the woods. So let's time this out in terms of the future cast and just don't focus on the exact placement of the showers and thunderstorms here as we go through time. Just the mere fact that they're represented at various times of day. Tonight, increasing clouds, low clouds to start the day tomorrow, maybe a sprinkle or two. We get into tomorrow midday and afternoon, 11 a.m., noon, 3 p.m. A few thunderstorms could pop up and especially west of I-35 tomorrow, whatever does develop has the chance of becoming strong to severe. We get into tomorrow night and we'll have some hit or miss showers and thunderstorms. Same goes for on into early Wednesday morning, some scattered, widely separated activity. This is good because it's an unsettled weather pattern. Rain chances are up, but they could come at a cost with a few isolated storms. Of course, that's always a caveat this time of year. The main event, though, right now still looks like Wednesday night. So let's take you on into midnight Thursday. So we're talking between about 10 p.m. Wednesday and about 2, 3 a.m. Thursday. That's when we should have the most lift and energy, a lot of moisture in the air to squeeze out, and we should see the most widespread showers and thunderstorms. Again, that's Wednesday night, so overnight Wednesday into very early on Thursday morning. As for accumulations, of course, this map is very general and vague, but it just it illustrates the fact that we could see over an inch to two in some parts of South Texas where we get some of the heaviest downpours. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Not, not everybody's going to see that, though. 85 right now, dew point is 61. Dew points are on the rise. It's going to be very sticky late tonight and especially early tomorrow. We're mostly in the 80s right now. As I mentioned before, this evening, pretty uneventful. Temperatures gradually falling off through the 80s and 70s. We'll start the day tomorrow at 70. 40% chance of showers and a few thunderstorms throughout the day tomorrow. 85 the high temperature. Rain chances peak Wednesday night 
And then into Thursday, we're looking at uh, some gusty winds. Even Wednesday and Thursday, prepare for gusty winds. And Thursday, we should dry out a bit in the afternoon. All right, some things to watch this week. Thanks, Adam. All right, when the Spurs traded away Kawhi Leonard, right. they got DeMar DeRozan back. A lot of people forget they also got Jakob Pearl. That's who right. Has been a pleasant surprise, in my opinion. Not a well known name for Spurs fans, but is making a name for himself as we speak by defending the rim and also attacking the rim. And if that wasn't enough, his free throw shooting is vastly improved. When we come back, what is Jakob Pearl's ceiling? He will tell us. And a Cowboys star, in fact, a legend, retiring. Coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs continue their four-game road trip on the East Coast now, starting with the Wizards in Washington tonight. That Saturday, they were able to hold off the Pelicans in New Orleans on Saturday night, 110-108, to behind an unbelievable performance by DeMar DeRozan, who almost didn't play with a right quad contusion. It's a very good thing he did, as DeRozan saved his best for his last, scoring 11 of his team-high 32 points in the final seven and a half minutes of the game, including taking his game right at Pelican star Zion Williamson, who had a game-high 33 points to keep the Spurs at number 10 now and in playoff tournament contention. And putting more space between them and New Orleans, who are now at number 11. But the play of Jakob Pertl in the middle has been nothing short of amazing. In fact, you could call him the most improved player of the year for the Silver and Black. He missed a new career high in blocks when he finished with five against New Orleans and had a shot at number six. But Derek White came in from the other side when Jackson Hayes decided not to challenge Jakob. Pertl, by the way, was asked during the team shoot-around today what could be his ceiling now that he's taking off. I can tell because I, I don't really measure my performance by my stats. I think the stats like naturally go up with more minutes, but um, it's not really something I, I look at in, in terms of like value of my my uh, effectiveness on the court. So it's it's hard to like set a ceiling for myself. But honestly, I, I think there there's a lot of room to play. So I, I think I, I still got got plenty. Plenty of room till I, till I reach my ceiling. All right, playing Eastern Conference teams used to be a check mark in the win column for the most part for the Silver and Black, but not this season. Even though the Wizards do not have a winning record, they're still at number 10 in the Eastern Conference, like the Spurs in the West, and in contention for the play-in tournament for the playoffs. And they are coming off a eight win in a row last night against the Cavaliers. The game was tied at 108 all late in the fourth quarter. And the Wizards go on an 8-0 run to close out the victory. Russell Westbrook to Daniel Gafford for the two-handed slam, and then Westbrook drains the long jumper as the Wizards win that one, 119-110. to Next up for the Spurs, it will be underway in just a matter of at 6 p.m. Highlights for you tonight on the Night Beat. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. After 11 seasons with the Dallas Cowboys, Sean Lee has decided to retire for the NFL, telling us it was a complete honor and blessed to play for great coaches and teammates that I love like brothers. Although Lee fought back from injuries many times, when healthy, the two-time Pro Bowler was one of the top tacklers in the league. And he said in his closing statement today's retirement statement, he said he, he owes a lot to the trainers. They earn their money with him. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going to be hard to think of him as not part of the team. Maybe anymore. Coach Lee some Day. What do you ah, think? Yeah. Okay. Please. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. That is all of our time for now. Thanks for watching the news at five. World News is next, and we'll see you right back here at six o'clock.